Hello, so this is Unit 1, Module 2, Solving Systems Using Substitution. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to solve a system of equations using the substitution method. Slightly different than the graphing method because we have to solve equations. Uh, you're also going to be able to explain what that solution means in a given situation and also create equations given a, given a situation. So, the first thing you need to do is know the steps on how to solve by substitution. So, the first step is to get either x or y alone. So, that is the first step. So, we want to make sure that x or y is alone. The second step is to plug or substitute that equation into the other. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to solve one for either x or y. And then we're just going to take whatever it's equal to and put it into the other equation. The third step is to solve for the remaining variable. So we'll be left with either x equals 2 or like y equals 4, something like that. And then the last step is take that value and plug it in to solve for the second variable. So I'm going to walk you through these three examples, and then I have an example of how this can be done given a situation. So, for example number one, or A, you'll notice that I have two equations, one, two, okay, and I have a y equals negative 3x. So that step number one, where it's get a variable alone or solve for a variable, I already have a y equals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this negative 3x, and because it's equal to y, I'm going to plug it in in the first equation for that y. So the new first equation becomes 8x plus 5, now I take the negative 3x and put it in for the y equals 14, negative 14. So now I am only left with x's. So now I can solve, using that third step, I can solve for x. So now I'm going to go 8x plus negative 15x equals negative 14. I'm going to combine these because they're on the same side. And now I'm going to divide by negative 7. And x is going to be 2. So I have found my x. So I'm done with my second or third step. So now I have to do the last step, which takes this value of x equals 2 and plugs it in to either one of these equations to solve for y. Now, I generally choose this equation because it's already y equals. So, all I have to do is y equals negative 3 times 2, which is negative 6. Now I have two solutions y equals negative 6, x equals 2, so the solution to that is 2, negative 6. 
and now you've done my first problem. My second example, you'll see that I don't see an x equals or a y equals. Now, <clears throat> the trick with these is I look for a variable that has a 1 in front of it. Those are the easiest ones to solve for. So for the first equation, I have 6x minus 4y equals 38. That's not going to be a nice, easy uh, equation to solve for a variable because it has all those coefficients in front of the x and the y. But in the second equation, I have x plus y equals 5. So I can solve for either x or y and get that alone. In this case, I'm going to get x alone, which means I'm going to take the y and I'm going to move it to the other side. Since I am adding y, I'm going to subtract y on both sides. And now this becomes x equals 5 minus y. Now I have an x equals 5 minus y. It's an equation that I then can plug in to my x value here. Because it's x equals, I plug it in for the x. So it would look like 6 times 5 minus y minus 4y equals 38. So I always have to put whatever I plug in in parentheses because it's going to go in and I'm going to have to distribute the number on the outside into those parentheses. So this will become 30 minus 6y minus 4y equals 38. I am now going to combine these into 30 minus 10y equals 38. I then subtract the 30. I'm left with negative 10y equals 8. I divide by negative 10. Negative 8 tenths or negative 4 fifths or negative 0.8 if you like that. Either way you guys want to write that. So now the trick is I have to take this value that I have just solved for and plug it in here, okay? Because I need to solve for x. So the what I do is I say x equals 5 minus my negative 4 fifths, which becomes 5 plus 4 fifths, or 5 and 4 fifths. And that's okay to leave it as that. I could also leave it as 29 over 5 by converting that into an improper fraction. Fractions are fine. So I'm going to leave my answer as 29 over 5 comma negative 4 fifths. And that is going to be my point of solution. Now, the reason why I use substitution over graphing, that would be really hard to find that intersection point. It wouldn't be at a specific corner. The last example, again, my x's and my y's are not the same. There are, are, are not, again, my x's and my y's are not alone in some of these equations. I, I have to solve for a variable. And the trick is looking at all of these coefficients and figuring out which one is equal to 1. Okay, what's the number in front of the x or y? Which one is 1? Because that's the easiest one to solve for. So if you look at this first equation, the x has a 1 in front of it. 
So that's going to be the easiest one. It's going to eliminate any fractions that I'm going to use throughout. So I'm going to take my x minus 3y equals 9, and I'm going to solve for x, which means I'm going to add 3y on both sides, and I'm going to be left with x equals 9 plus 3y. Now that I have a variable alone, I'm going to take this variable, and I'm going to plug it into the other equation in for the variable that I've solved for. So it becomes 6 times my 9 plus 3y minus 5y equals 2. You notice that there's only y's in that equation now. means that now I can distribute which is 54 plus 18y minus 5y equals 2. So I'm left with 54 plus 13y equals 2. I subtract 54 on both sides, so I'm left with 34 to 13y equals negative 52. I divide by 13. 13, and I get y equals negative 4. Now, I take that negative 4, and I'm going to plug it in for this y here to solve for x. 9 plus 3 times negative 4, 9 minus 12, negative 3. So my final solution is negative 3, negative 4. And that is how I would do those purely algebraic problems. The next piece is all about word problems. So, the trick is, how do I read this? Okay? So one of the major tenets of the Heffa project is passing the gift. Okay? It's all setting it up. Okay? Village Gardens in Portland, Oregon is a group of public housing residents, many of whom are refugees in, or immigrants. This does not matter to the problem. It's only giving you context. Okay? Heifer International will provide the group goats for milk and chickens for eggs. Okay. So we know that we are talking about goats, and we know we are talking about chickens. Okay? Each goat costs 120 bucks. So that is important. And each flock of chickens costs $20. Portland's middle school and high school musicians raise $1,000. Ooh, that's important. By putting on a charity band and orchestra concert for Village Gardens. Okay, so I don't care how they got the money. I just care that they got, okay? I only care, goats cost 120, chickens cost 20, music, then they raised 1,000. The village has re requested 10 gifts, so that the total number of goats and flocks of chickens will be 10. So, total number of goats and chickens will be 10, okay? How many goats? and flocks of chickens will be sent to the village. So that is the question right here. Okay, That is the question right at the end. How many will be sent? So the first step when we do this is we need to define our variables, which means what the, is x going to stand for and what is y going to stand for. Well, the two things that we're talking about in this problem are goats and chickens. Okay? Those are the two things that I'm talking about. Those are the things that are costing us money. Okay? So, develop an equation that represents the number of goats and chickens. Well, we're talking about a number, a total number. We know that we want a total of 10. 
So when we take our goats and our chickens and we put them together, we want them to be 10. Otherwise known as x plus y equals 10. Goats plus chickens equals 10. Our, our next step is to develop an equation that represents the cost of the goats and chickens. Cost, otherwise known as money. And you are, you'll hear me talk about money equations. You'll notice that the goats cost 120, chickens cost 20, and they raised $1,000. That means I can create an equation that says 120x plus 20y has to equal 1,000. 120 bucks for each goat, $20 for each flock of chickens, and I have $1,000 that I can spend. I have just created my two equations. Now, I solve. So, I have x plus y equals 10, 120x plus 20y equals 1,000. So now, I'm going to choose an equation to solve. I'm going to choose this equation because the x's and the y's both have 1's in front of them. And I'm going to solve for y. So, x plus y equals 10. I'm going to subtract the x on both sides. So I got y equals 10 minus x. What I do next is I take this and I plug it in here. So I'm left with 120x plus 20 times 10 minus x equals 1,000. I distribute. I combine like terms. I subtract 200 on both sides. And now, I divide by 100, and I get x equals 8. So now, I would take this answer and plug it in here, and I would get y equals 10 minus 8, which is 2. So, I have to go back to my original question. My original question says, how many goats and flocks of chickens will be sent to the village? Well, x represents goats, y equals chickens. So my answer to this is 8 goats and 2 chickens. So it's all about the setup. It's all about defining your variables. Create two equations to then solve. The next problems on the next page will practice those skills. Come to me with any problems. Thank you.